Good morning. Welcome on this Lord's Day. It is good to have you with us. As we begin in worship this morning, we do have a few announcements. First, a reminder to read your FYI and bring that home with you as there are things worth remembering throughout the week. Um, also, just some reminders for things coming up. Um, we are always in need of worship assistance. Um, as you can see, this is definitely a light week. Um, but if you are in town and interested in helping, we invite you to sign up on the sign-up sheet in the narthex. Um, any, anyone that's interested in ushering, acolyting, lector, communion assistant, clicker, um, is always appreciated. And if um, you're new to that role, we can always walk you through it as well. Um, I have heard that our food pantry is running low on inventory. And so um, anytime that you are interested in donating to the food pantry, um, you're welcome to, you know, pick up something extra from the grocery store, and we do have the cart available in the narthex, um, and that is taken to the, the food pantry regularly. I think over the summer, you know, donations tend to be a little bit lower, uh, and so I'm sure they would appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Uh, we do continue to hold our aerobics classes on Mondays and Wednesdays uh, at 9 a.m., uh, and so a reminder that that is happening each week in the parish hall. Beginning in September, the cost for those classes is $4 a session. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, on September 3rd and 4th, we are celebrating bags full of blessings. So especially those that are going back to school, but also anybody that has a laptop bag, a lunch box, you know, a briefcase, whatever you use to go to work, or even if you take your lunch to the park every day, um, bring in a bag to represent what you do in your daily routine. Um, and we will bless you during the service that weekend. Uh, we have a flu shot clinic coming up on Wednesday, September 7th from 10 a.m. to noon. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex with more information, and that's for those individuals that are on Medicare. Um, our, let's see, following that we have on Saturday, September 10th, we have our diner dash coming up after the, the five o'clock service on Saturday. Uh, so you're welcome to join us for dinner, dessert, fellowship, whatever you would like that evening. Uh, and then on Sunday, September 11th, between services, we'll be having a small service project assembling hygiene kits for the homeless uh, as part of God's work, our hands day, which is the ELCA day of service. And then our next blood drive is Friday, September 16th from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you can sign up online. Uh, and there is a resource fair coming up for um, veterans, Stand Down South Jersey, and that is September 23rd at the Cherry Hill Armory. And you can see Nancy Prickett for more information. I believe that concludes our announcements, and so now I invite you to please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love one another as God loves us. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen congregation may be seated and we will still do a children's sermon this morning um, but I'll invite a little bit of congregational participation um, and hopefully there are some kids on the live stream or that will watch later um, as well and so um, you're invited to stay where you are you don't have to come forward um, but I do have a challenge for us today to help us understand the woman in our gospel story um, this is the woman who was bent over for 18 years okay so I invite um, those of you that don't have a bad back um, to go ahead and stand up um, and you're going to bend over at your waist looking straight ahead and or straight down at the floor and so I want you to imagine you know what it would be like to be this way for 18 years you know imagine going to the grocery store and needing something on the top shelf or even just trying to look someone in the eye is a challenge right um, and now we can stand up <laughs> Um, the kids might have stayed that way a little bit longer, but that's okay, and you can have a seat now. Um, so this wasn't an easy situation, you know, to be this way for 18 years. Um, you know, it, we've, some adults have hurt their back before. Maybe kids can imagine what it's like to be hurt and not be able to move the same way as um, they normally would. Um, but it, to be in that amount of pain and that struggle for 18 years um, would be a big challenge. Um, and so in today's Bible story, Jesus was teaching in a place like a church called a synagogue. Um, and it was the Sabbath, the day when everyone was supposed to rest. They were supposed to study their scriptures. They were supposed to learn more about God. Um, but when Jesus saw this woman there in the synagogue, Jesus called her forward and she hobbled on up. Um, and Jesus said to her, woman, be healed of your ailment. Um, be healed of your disability and he touched her and immediately she sh stood up straight and began praising God after 18 long years she was able to stand up straight again um, and so not everybody though was happy with this woman being healed the leader of the synagogue it would be like the pastor in the church 
um, was really angry that Jesus had broken the rules because you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. And healing this woman, he said, was work. Um, but Jesus says that this is a rule that sometimes can be broken. And, you know, usually we try not to break the rules, especially as kids. But if it means that someone in need is going to get what they are in need of, Jesus is saying that it's more important to serve a person in need than to break, you know, some of the rules in our world. Um, and so we take care of our animals every day. Um, so why wouldn't we take care of this woman who's been hurting for 18 long years, is what Jesus has to say. And so the people were so happy. They rejoiced at all the wonderful things that Jesus was teaching him. Jesus knew, teaching them, Jesus knew that rules were important, but the needs of the people were even more important. Um, and so we can remember that too, that people's needs are more important sometimes than some of our small rules in our world. So when we see someone in need, the most important thing to do is to help them. And so we'll pray together. Dear God, help us to follow the example that Jesus has set for us. Help us to place the needs of others ahead of any rule that we may have. In Jesus' name, amen. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your feet in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with, heritage, with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us say Psalm 103 responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Delight in your praise, crown you with the treasures of your holy heart. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Words you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, abounding in goodness. The second reading is from the twelfth chapter of Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. 
for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. Holy wisdom, holy word. Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox and his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from the bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. God of restoration, healing, and wholeness, you deliver us from the exile of our lives into the promised land of salvation. We give you thanks that you have called us to lay a foundation of faith for many generations to come. Help us to create your kingdom that is welcoming to all so that everyone may make their home in it. And by your grace, make us repairers of the breach and restorers of streets to live in so that your love and mercy will always have a home here. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we pray. Amen. And so in today's gospel story, 
we hear of a woman who has been crippled and unable to stand up straight for 18 years. She's come to the temple to hear Jesus teaching on the Sabbath, but Jesus has something more in mind for her. When Jesus sees this woman, he calls her to come forward. He declares that she is free from her ailment. He lays his hands on her, and immediately she is able to stand up straight, and the first thing she does is praise God. But meanwhile, the leader of the synagogue is angry because this healing has occurred on the Sabbath, which is perceived to violate the Jewish law against working on that day. The leader of the synagogue proceeds to reprimand the crowd for seeking healing on the Sabbath, despite the fact that the woman never requested healing. Instead, it was Jesus who called her forward to be healed. Jesus then uses this opportunity to teach the crowd and rebuke the synagogue leader for keeping the law too strictly. Now, being a healer was a profession in Jesus' time, similar to a doctor or physician today. In some ways, this leader of the synagogue is telling Jesus that he should do his work on the other six days of the week and lead, leave the Sabbath for rest, just like any other person. But Jesus' response is to point out what was well known at that time as an exception to the law. This exception states that you can break all but three of the laws if doing so would save a life. And so by this exception, the people in Jesus' time were allowed to do the work of untying their don donkeys and mules on the Sabbath so that they had food and water. And then by this exception, Jesus argues, this daughter of Abraham's illness should be healed and her life spared, regardless of the prohibition against working on the Sabbath. It seems the leader of this synagogue was more concerned with keeping the letter of the law than with keeping the spirit of the law. He seemed to love the law more than he loved this daughter of Abraham. Now, it's tempting to think that this is a Jewish issue, loving laws more than God. It's tempting, tempting and has happened in the past that we blame the entire Jewish faith for their love of the law. But this story has nothing to do with placing blame, and the issue is far bigger than we'd like to believe. You don't have to go far into Christianity to find Christians who love rules more than Jesus. They exist in every church denomination, and perhaps even in every church. But it's easy to see why. Rules are easy. Either you follow them or you don't. You know very clearly what you are allowed to do and what you cannot do. Rules can limit us. They can prevent us from doing certain things, but at the same time, it's important for us to have rules. We need to know how and when and why to do things. We have rules for safety, rules for theology and right practice. We have rules for tradition. We have rules for good order's sake, and we have rules to help build community and relationships. We have rules around how money is counted in the church so that the congregation can trust that their money is contributed to its intended purposes. We have rules around voting in the church, so that those who are active and present within the life of the congregation can have their voices heard. And we have rules around who can preside at the Lord's table, so that the sacrament is properly cared for and administered. But the problem arises when we become too bound up in our rules and they become the primary way that we express our faith. Either consciously or unconsciously, our faith then becomes a list of rules to be followed rather than the living and dynamic center of our lives that faith is meant to be. When these rules become the center of our faith, we find ourselves concerned only with ourselves and concerned only about our own checklist to follow. We fail to see the people around us and the world and the needs of all those around us. It's the reason that it took the Good Samaritan to help the injured man alongside the road after a priest and a Levite passed by on the other side. It's the reason the leader of the synagogue is upset that Jesus is healing on the Sabbath. 
It's the reason that churches have been concerned for decades about who is allowed inside their doors. It's the reason we judge one another for church attendance, for proper attire or generosity. It's the reason that some people like to call themselves good Christians and label all those other people as bad Christians. We become so wrapped up in our rules that we begin to love our rules more than we love Jesus. It means we follow our rules and lose sight of the reason we have them in the first place. And that reason is that Christ, our Savior, loves us, cares for us, and wants us to live together in faithful community with one another as the body of Christ. The purpose of our faith is not to have rules. It is to live into the salvation that only Christ can bring. When we're honest with ourselves, we realize that our rules cannot save us. No amount of proper communion practice, church attendance, or counting procedures can produce salvation. Following rules perfectly won't heal the brokenness we feel in our lives, it won't change the sinful world that surrounds us, and it won't allow the bent-over woman to stand up straight. Rules can't save us. Only Jesus can. And this is precisely why faith is more than simple rule following. Faith is living, breathing, active, and loving. Faith sits at the intersection of laws and grace, personal experience, tradition, contemporary needs, communal hope, and the dream of God's coming kingdom full of justice and mercy. Faith teaches us how to live in the world that God created and faith guides us to a life that is full of meaning and purpose. And Jesus comes to us today to impart that very faith, to remind us that all religion, whether Jewish, Christian, Muslim, or any other faith, it's about life, not rules. God in Christ gives us that life, a life more important than the rules that we make for ourselves. It's a life that sees value in caring for every one of our beloved siblings, all of our fellow children of Abraham and Sarah. It's a life that no rule, no rule maker, no suffering and death can take away. God gives us this life freely as a gift. God gives us this life fully and wholly in Jesus Christ, a life for today, and life eternal. Thanks be to God. Amen.
are gathered as the body of Christ throughout the world, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Please sit or kneel as able. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress, especially Mason Sr., Vera, Michelle, Gloria, Greg, Joan M., Julia, Marie, Colin, Marilyn A., and Gretchen. Merciful God, you call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place, especially Duane and Harry. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom, Amen.
please stand. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. The congregation is invited to be seated. Communion this morning will be celebrated by a continuous style in which you're invited forward by the center aisle. Receive wine poured from the chalice using an empty cup in the tray or using uh, the pre-poured cups of grape juice. All are welcome if you prefer to remain in your pew or if you're communing on the live stream. Following the distribution, you will receive communion.
Now for those remaining in the pews or on the live stream, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Now please stand. Now the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Amen.